Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends and colleagues, for those of you who don't know me, I am Lawrence Weinbaum, Director of the Israel Council on Foreign Relations, which operates under the auspices of the World Jewish Congress, and I am also the Chief Editor of the Israel Journal of Foreign Affairs. Uh, before we would begin, I would ask that everyone please switch off their mobile phones and any other devices that might uh, interfere with our presentation. It is, of course, a very great pleasure, yet also a challenge, to introduce Claude Lanzmann, one of the most extraordinary filmmakers of all time. He is the creator of many outstanding films, including Sahal, a truly inspiring tribute to the men and women who so ably and courageously defend this country. Lanzmann's magnum opus, Shoah, has done much to help us understand, to the extent that we can even use that word, the destruction of European Jewry. In that chilling nine-hour cinematic masterpiece, we learn about the horrifying murder of six million Jews through the late Raoul Hilberg's prism of the victims, the perpetrators, and the bystanders. We can today, of course, revise that paradigm thanks in part to the work of my colleague in Ottawa, Jan Grabowski, to also include another category, the facilitators and abettors, some of whom also appear in Lanzmann's Shoah. Those of you who have seen that movie, and I urge anyone who has not to do so at the first opportunity, will remember the 40 minutes devoted to the story of Jan Karski, who was a pivotal witness in the film. In the last three decades, the figure of Jan Karski has emerged from historical oblivion to which it had been relegated in the years following the war. And today, he is one of the most widely known personalities connected to the story of the Holocaust, and in particular, the story of the Allied response. Significantly, in telling and retelling Karski's story, as with the transmission of any historical events, Sometimes fact has been confused with fiction, or some elements have been emphasized while others have been forgotten, whether by design or by accident. Not everyone, for example, is aware of the fact that Ankarski's first mission in the winter of 1940 from occupied Poland to the Polish government in exile, which was then situated in France, Karski reported on the state of relations between Jews and Poles thus. The Polish attitude toward Jews is, and I quote, ruthless, often without pity. A large part avails itself of the prerogatives vis-a-vis -vis the Jews that they have in the new situation. They use these prerogatives repeatedly and often even abuse them. To some extent, this brings the Poles closer to the Germans. The new anti-Semitism of a broad stratum of Polish society did not diminish at all. The Germans, noted Karski, were able to use the Jewish question as, and again I quote, something akin to a narrow bridge upon which the Germans and a large part of Polish society are finding agreement, unquote. And this concerned evaluation of Polish-Jewish relations in wartime Poland constitutes an important backdrop to the evolution of Karski's understanding of the plight of Polish Jewry. Now, some hours ago, we heard a riveting presentation by my colleague, Dr. Wojtek Rapak from London, who shared with us the fruits of his meticulous efforts to deconstruct the story of Jan Karski's meeting on July 28, 1943, with President Franklin D. Roosevelt. In so doing, he has provided us with the context needed to appreciate the film we are about to see. It is important to note that in the years following Lanzmann's 1978 interview with Karski, historians, notably David Engel at New York University, were able to unearth additional information which shed new light both on the context of Karski's meeting with FDR as well as what actually transpired there. Karski himself clarified his account of those events relating to the information that had been brought to his attention. For example, and most significantly, we know now that Karski was not an eyewitness 
to the slaughter at Belzec, but he was present at the transit camp at Izbica, and that these two locations were confused. Certainly, there is no question that Karski did report to FDR that, and I quote, the Poles are to become a nation of slaves, the Jews are to be exterminated. The Germans want to destroy the Jewish nation biologically. If there is no Allied intervention, the Jewish people will cease to exist." Unquote. Claude Lanzmann has earned a prominent place in the pantheon of chroniclers of the Shoah. We are all enormously in his debt and exceedingly fortunate to have him here with us at the Begin Center this evening to present the Karski Report. I would be remiss, however, were I not to acknowledge with great pleasure and heartfelt gratitude the enriching participation in this conference of the indefatigable Professor Jutta Bauer, one of the giants of Holocaust history, and Lanzmann's historical consultant. <laughs> Monsieur Lanzmann, s'il vous plaît. Good, um, good evening. Do you hear me? All right. Uh, first of all, I, I apologize for daring to sit, to stay sitting in front of you and not uh, standing. But I have some problems with my feet and I walk on my bones and it is sometimes very, very painful. Although in order to avoid this, I prefer to, to sit even in front of such a distinguished uh, audience. Um, I really don't know how to introduce this film because it's uh, very complicated and uh, in order to do it properly, one has to enter into the details. And to enter, enter into the details would require a long time, more time than uh, we are allowed to, to use, to have. And I, I will try to, to make a resume. Uh, first of all, this film was not supposed to exist because uh, I shot in uh, Washington um, for two full days with um, Jan Karski. On the first day, everybody knows the first day, because uh, the first day is uh, in Shoah. Mm. And there was the second day, too. And I shot the second day. And it was uh, very interesting. But Karski was not the same the second day as he was uh, the first one. Maybe uh, he started to, to be used to, to the camera, to me, I don't know. And he was more anecdotic, in my opinion, than during the first, uh, the first day. And uh, I decided that I would not use the parts that you we will see. I thought that uh, everybody knows, everybody knew that the Jews have not been uh, rescued. And I prefer to have uh, Karski saying after his uh, two visits in the Warsaw Ghetto, saying plainly, but I reported what I saw. It was more dramatic, in my opinion, than to enter into the detail 
of the way he reported on, to whom he reported on. Maybe I was wrong, I don't know. I think I was not wrong. But, uh, you know, it was, he was so strong in the first, uh, the first day, and I was myself uh, extremely moved because uh, everybody thought that Karski was not alive anymore. And when I discovered that he was alive, it was a great shock for me, like an archaeological exhumation. Uh, and um, and I discovered too that. Uh, he was an extraordinary, extraordinary man, a fascinating man. Um, and, um, and I saw that I, I made uh, justice to him, towards him not including in Shoah as a film that uh, you will uh, you will see. But the film that you will see is not uh, at all uninteresting the other way around, if I may say so. Um, and I had to decide to use this part of uh, these two days of uh, talk, of interview with uh, Karski, um, because somebody complete something uh, completely unexpected happened in France. There are people who think that they have the rights, the full rights on whatever they want. And there was a young uh, French uh, writer, not Jewish at all, as a matter of fact, who decided to, to make a book, to publish a book about uh, Kersky. I think that it is the title of the book, as a matter, matter of fact. And the first chapter was, uh, <coughs> was a resume, word for, for word, but uh, compressed, of uh, of what is written in the book called uh, Shoah, made after the, after the film. Uh, there are three chapters in this book. The second chapter was uh, exactly the same thing with the book that Karski himself wrote, Story of a Secret State. And there is a third part in this book, which is the creation of this French uh, so-called writer. Suddenly, he starts, uh, and it is uh, unbearable. He says to invent another uh, Karski who has nothing to do with uh, real Karski, the Karski that you will see, and the Karski who is in Shoah. Um, he makes uh, from uh, of Karski a kind of 
Jewish martyr, martyr, martyrdom for the Jews. And uh, this is uh, absolutely false. And Kersky was not, not uh, like this. Alors, you will see and you will understand what I am trying to tell you now. Uh, and after, I think it will be much uh, efficient if uh, you ask me questions and if I answer to, to your question. Okay, I suggest that we, use, we start with the film. Yeah, so uh, I think we will first screen the film uh, and then uh, Monsieur Lanzmann will take questions. Gentlemen. public et pendant des décennies, une chape de silence étouffa l'Holocauste laissé aux seules mains des spécialistes. 40 ans plus tard, en 1985, la sortie de mon film Shoah ressuscita Karski pour chacun de nous, l'inscrivant dans l'histoire et dans l'esprit objectif. J'ai tourné avec Karski pendant deux jours entiers. dire à la fin de son récit « But I reported what I saw » mais j'ai fait mon rapport sur ce que j'avais vu. Car ce qui me disait ainsi qu'il avait accompli sa mission réussissant à passer de Varsovie à Londres, le gouvernement polonais décida qu'il devait se rendre aux états unis et répéter là-bas, devant les plus hautes instances du pouvoir, ce qu'il avait à dire. 
au cours de la deuxième journée de tournage, Karski a exposé devant ma caméra tous les détails de sa rencontre avec le président Roosevelt pour des raisons proprement artistiques de tension dramatique, au point où j'en étais de la construction de mon film, parce que celui-ci aurait été trop long, parce que Karski lui-même se montrait le deuxième jour très différent de ce qu'il avait été le premier, j'avais choisi de laisser de côté tous ces passages. C'est pourtant une partie de cela, en particulier la rencontre entre Karski et Roosevelt, que vous allez voir dans un instant. J'en ai décidé ainsi, car il m'a semblé absolument nécessaire de rétablir la vérité. Karski, dans le récit qu'il nous donne des réactions de ses divers interlocuteurs anglais et américains, nous fait éprouver une question centrale dans toute sa gravité. Qu'est-ce que savoir Qu'est-ce qu'une information sur une horreur à la lettre inouïe peut signifier pour un cerveau humain impréparé à la recevoir, car il s'agissait d'un crime sans précédent dans l'histoire des hommes Quoi qu'on en dise, la majorité des Juifs, une fois commencée la guerre que leur livrait Hitler, ne pouvaient pas être sauvés. Tel est le tragique de l'histoire qui interdit l'illusion rétrospective, oublieuse de l'épaisseur, des pesanteurs, de l'illisibilité d'une époque, configuration vraie de l'impossible. On demandait à Raymond Aron, réfugié à Londres, s'il avait su alors ce qui se passait à l'Est. Il répondait « J'ai su, mais je ne l'ai pas cru. Et puisque je ne l'ai pas cru, je ne l'ai pas su. » Professor Kersky, uh, you know that the, the subject of this film is the destruction of the Euro European Jews, the Holocaust. And I would like to know, among all the official political leaders to whom you delivered your report, uh, did you have the chance to mention specifically the Jewish uh, problem? I would like to know what were the possibilities for you to talk about this and who was interested, how they were interested, I understand. how they reacted. So now, I understand the subject of this film you are making is, you hope it will be shown eventually, probably the second part. You want to have testimonies, interviews for historical records, okay. say, for some archives. So now, so I understand, I must be very precise, and now I am asking you to bear with me and to understand my possibilities and my mission in the so-called Western free world. Dealing with the Polish government leaders, political leaders, Polish Jewish leaders, Because of the nature of my mission, I traveled, as you know, several times, because within the statute of my mission was I was going back to Poland. I was a very important man. I was a hero. Everything was at my disposal. I met the most important men. They catered to me. I could, to whomever I spoke, I could tell them I didn't finish. I have more to say. On many occasions, I was, had such a situation with General Sikorsky, whom I saw at least five times. General, I didn't finish yet. He would say, Lieutenant, My secretary will inform you when I will be free for you. So with the Polish side of my mission, I had great possibilities to report, and I did the report. Now, you are asking the second part of my report. We have to make a distinction now. With the English, or American, certain 
political leaders, like Jewish leaders. Oh yes, they listen to me. They let me report. With uh, those great uh, intellectual leaders, poets, writers, etc. Well, frankly, I felt uh, free. And I would, so to say, press myself. Still there is more. Still I want you, you to know more. H. G. Wells, Kessler, this kind of people. Now, speaking about government leaders in Great Britain and the United States, I met all of them as a result of the Polish government, usually prime ministers, request. In London, the prime minister asked them to see some recently arrived agent from the Polish underground and his report might be of interest to his majesty government or to that particular minister or a government leader. In the United States, it was the ambassador, of course. Everything was in his hands. Now, you must realize, at that time, I was not allowed to have any contacts. I had to report to the proper offices every man I met. I was free to go to a theater, to a nightclub, to, to, to then I had plenty of money, of course, to buy myself new clothes, whatsoever. I could not have contacts on my own initiative, only as instructed. You are going to see such and such a leader. The same in the United States. Of course, I lived in the embassy. I was not allowed to live in any, to take any hotel. I lived all the time on the premises. And uh, how did it happen with Roosevelt? With President Roosevelt. I must, well, Polish ambassador in Washington was informed about my existence in London. Uh, before coming to London, I didn't expect to go to the United States. Now, it was the Polish ambassador who in his reports to the prime minister suggested he thinks that it may be useful if before returning to Poland, Karski will come secretly to the United States. The ambassador is pretty sure he will get him in touch with the key members of the government and the proper people. He hopes the president himself will be interested in his report. Once we received this report, General Sikorsky tells me, Lieutenant, you go to Washington before you go to Poland. I arrived to Washington. Ambassador Ciechanowski already totally acquainted with my material. I stay at the embassy, as you can imagine. Every morning, every evening, we talk about uh, what happened in Poland. Uh, the most, by the way, intimate talks were when there was a sort of a ritual in the evening, after dinner, before going to bed, the ambassador would walk his dog, Kruczek. I would walk the ambassador, he always invited me, Johnny, come with me. Then we would again. Most intimate, even Madame Ciechanowska. She may see this film. She lives now in Belgium. Even she was not present. And then sometime his worries and his fears and all this. At a certain point, he tells me, Johnny, listen, the President of the United States wishes to see you. Now, he briefs me. 
As a matter of fact, all the time, he was criticizing me on one point. Mainly, Johnny, you are inclined, you talk too much. You must acquire precision, you have precision, to be concise. You realize, people I am going to introduce you, they are the most powerful people. Poland is minor concern for them. They have the whole war. They wage this war. So be careful, Cons concise, precision, concentrate rather on their questions. Try to answer the questions. President comes. He gives me the same brief. Now you be careful. You are going to see the most powerful man on this globe. This man evidently is busy. He thinks in terms of the war, of humanity. Roosevelt had this inclination which Ambassador Czechanowski instructed. We have a president, he thinks in terms, he thinks after this war, the human race will be organized in such a way, no more wars, and he will play the key role in this arrangement. So now, again, be brief, very concise. I am not going to take part in the conversation. I will go with you. As, a, as required by diplomatic protocol. I have to certify your veracity, introduce you to the president. Then I will sit quiet. So don't rely on me. I will be unable to help you in any way. It may be that the president will ask me a question, then I will answer his question. So I don't know how the conversation will develop. I don't know how long you will stay with the president. Only you are on your own, and now be wise. With this kind of briefing, limousine was whatsoever brings us to the White House. Ambassador punctual, president punctual. Secretary leads me to his office. I see Roosevelt. She looked like a world leader. Like a world leader? World leader, yes. As a matter of fact, he struck me. He was more than the President of the United States. His formulations, his gestures, he did consider himself a world leader. He sits behind his desk, Behind him, of course, all American flags, <laughs> you know, very impressive, the whole wall covered by them. Very high chair, grand seigneur, because I was warned he will not get up when he will shake your hand. He's crippled, he shakes hand, please sit down, Mr. Ambassador. Says, Mr. Karski, uh, I know about you. I have been informed about your great work, contribution to the Allied cause. I am sure that you would like me to be informed about things in Poland. Please. Now, you see, realize this, I had it throughout my entire mission. For me, the Jewish problem was not the only problem. For me, the key problem was Poland. Kerzon line, Soviet demands, communists in the underground movement. 
fear of the Polish nation. What is going to happen to Poland? This was the emphasis. Of your mission? Yeah, yes, of my mission, of course, and my concern, naturally. I speak to the president in those terms, expectations, fears among the leaders, all hope, Mr. President, has been placed by the Polish nations in the hands of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. You said this? Oh, yes. In proper words? Oh, yes, in the same words. Mm -hmm. Not the president. Franklin Delano Roosevelt. He says, I describe thinking how much time I have. He says, then I come to the Jewish problem. Mr. President, before having left Poland, I was charged with this mission by the most important Jewish leaders. They organized for me two visits in the ghetto. I saw extermination camp. The name is Belzec, B-E-L-Z-E-C. Mr. President, the situation is horrible. The point is, without the outside help, the Jews will perish in Poland. He enters. I remember every second of this conversation. The Allied Nations what did he answer specifically? Nothing. He enters the picture now. Nothing. This was the end of your report? Yes. Nothing. It came at the end, I, the, the Jewish... Uh, I never had a chance. So now his answer. The Allied Nations are going to win this war. No more wars. Justice will be done. Your country will be alive again, more prosperous than before. Criminals will be punished. The United States will not abandon your country. As a matter of fact, now he says, Poland, as recompensation, will receive East Prussia, or a part of East Prussia. No more corridor. And now, to the ambassador. Mr. Ambassador, what do you think about it? Of course, Mr. Ambassador loves it, only he wants all of it. <laughs> <laughs> not part of his Prussia. Short conversation over there. Uh, then, when you return to Poland, you will tell your Polish leaders, this country will never fail them. They have a friend in the president of the United States. And now she does ask me questions, oh yes, underground movement. Do you know what question he asked me? Do I understand correctly, young men, that before the war, Poland was essentially an agricultural country? Yes, Mr. President, it was so. Well, now, what we understand in the Russian campaign, the Germans had to use tremendous amount of horses. Did they take those horses from Poland? Because with your agricultural economy, 
You need horses. Mr. President. Yes. He asked me other questions. I had no chance except my initial statement to tell you, Mr. President, listen to me. Well, you don't speak to the President of the United States. No Jewish problem was mentioned until the end of the conversation, which lasted one hour twenty minutes. But, uh, excuse me to insist, but it is my, my thema. Uh, about the Jews, did he ask specific questions? No, no one? No, not, not a single one. Not a single one? Not a single one. How do you what I said, that? I said only on my initiative as an opening statement. When he asked me, I presume you want to pass certain information. Bring attention. Okay. You gave everything on the Jews at the end. General terms, yes. I saw the again. You didn't ask one specific question. Not a single one. And how do you explain this? I don't know. She did make a gesture now. What was the significance of this uh, gesture? Was it a gesture or was it an expression of goodwill of the center of power who does not deal with particular problems? I don't know until today. Uh, wiser people than I could not decipher FDR. <laughs> he was a great man, mainly. After we left the White House, and then, of course, as you can imagine, we returned to the embassy, and the ambassador gives me one uh, be, 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 typist, uh, he goes to another room, another typist, uh, and his instructions. Now, you write your report, I write my report. Johnny, be careful. Everything counted. If you noticed his smile, put it in the report. We just saw the center of power of humanity. And then we will compare our bold report. I have to send the report to London, of course. Yes. Then, so we, we, we cooked up whatever it was. Then comes the problem. I think it was next day, very soon. It might be even the same evening, as a matter of fact. He sees me, the ambassador, and says, well, Johnny, now, I got from the White House a message. Apparently, the president would like you to see the following individuals. And he wants you to pass to them all your reports. Now, on that list now, it was a long list. Some individuals, for instance. Oh, yes, there was Rabbi Wise, whom I saw already, by the way. Goldman. Waldman, I remember. As a matter of fact, uh, certain Jesuit priest, Father, uh, Father Walsh. Uh, there was a yeah. Supreme Court justice. Frankfurt. Justice, uh, yes, so, uh, Justice Frankfurter, I saw him on the recommendation of President Roosevelt. But there were names. Secretary of War, Stimson, was. Secretary of State, Cordell Hall, uh, uh, Archbishop Spellman, Archbishop Muni, uh, Muni Archbishop Stritch. The, the apostolic delegate uh, Cicognani. Uh, the delegate from the Pope. Uh, the apostolic delegate from the Pope. Now, uh, I interpreted this and the ambassador that the president was interested in the Jewish problem. Only uh, on his level the problem uh, was not of direct, so to say, his jurisdiction. He sent me to the people 
Hun she considered actually could take some action knowing that I was sent to them on his recommendation. It might have but been did you also... Feel, did, you, did you feel yourself a tragic uh, discrepancy between the, the demands and the expectations, hopeless expectations of the people in Warsaw, I mean the Jews, that you met on this, uh, on this result, this visit, because there is no communication. I understand. History passed, 35 years passed, so I understand your film, your, your archives, film archives. After my audience with President Roosevelt, I was so overwhelmed by this fact, I reported to the President of the United States. I didn't think about anything else. I was totally overwhelmed by it. Years passed, and of course now I think about it. What was the significance? And I don't have the answer. Perhaps he wanted, expected others to do. Perhaps they did do things. None of the allied leaders on the level, as I met them, would tell me what he was going to do. You understand? A few days later, uh, the ambassador tells me, Johnny, now, you are going to see Justice Frankfurter. He will come here. Justice Frankfurter, he means he was a member of the Supreme Court. Of the Supreme Court. Court. Now, again, he gave me his briefing. He will come here, he said. Mm -hmm. He will come here. As a matter of fact, except cabinet members. Usually people came to the embassy. I lived in the embassy. Okay. So he will come here. Now, he gave me his briefing. Now, Johnny, again, be careful. He always would brief me. Now, all knowledgeable people consider this man the most brilliant man in the administration. As a justice of the Supreme Court, uh, the institution is very important. But next, for years, he's a confidant of the president. All American knows about it. And he was a Jew. No. And he says, Johnny, no. He's a Jew. So be sure he will be interested in your report. All right, so I wait again carefully. On the appointed hour, as a matter of fact, I even remember it was between breakfast and lunch, before lunch in the morning hours. On time, I was sitting in the living room, salon. Ambassador comes from the first floor with Justice Frankfurter. Justice Frankfurter. A little man, he did emanate some brilliance, very alive, his eyes. Unimpressive physically, a little man, Jewish looking, uh, very friendly, friendly smile, uh, towards me all the time friendly. Several times he called me young man during our conversation. Well, I introduced myself, we sat down. He, in front of me, Czechanowski, on my left. Justice Frankfurt starts. Mr. Karski, I have been invited, but my very good friend your ambassador to come here to see. I was also advised that I should see you. A 
apparently you have some information which I should know. What do you have to say? My answer. Sir, I don't know what you are interested in. Could you ask me some questions? It will be easier on me. Frankfurter. Young man, do you know that I am a Jew? Yes, sir. Mr. Ambassador told me about this. Well, tell me about the Jews. We have here many reports. What happens to the Jews in your country? No, I become a machine again. I give my stuff. The man sits. I remember he looked like smaller and smaller. Somehow, yes. like Kirby, looking at the floor. At the he doesn't interrupt me. I report, as you know from this film, usually it lasted 15, 20 minutes. I tell him, Jewish leaders, ghetto, Belgians. Well, it was 15, 20 minutes passed, and I stop. No, Justice Frankfurter, he sits, looks at me still at this moment, and tells me the following. Young man, as I mentioned, I have been informed about your activity. I was told that you came out of hell. And I was told that you are going back to hell. My admiration for people like you. And now, young men, I am no longer young. I am judge of men. Men like me, with a man like you, must be totally honest. And I am telling you, I do not believe you. Czeranowski breaks in. Felix, what are you talking about? Well, you know about him. He comes, uh, so the president, he was checked, rechecked ten times in, in, in England here. Felix, uh, what? He's not lying. Frankfurt, still walking. Mr. Ambassador, formally, I did not say that he is lying. I said that I don't believe him. These are different things. And uh, my mind, my heart, they are made in such a way that I cannot accept it. No! 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 I learned something that is a shock to me. He began, I mean, it is, eventually he did ask me 
friendly few, friendly question. You, I know human soul, I know what's a... Yes, I am a judge of men. I know humanity. I know men. Impossible. No. No. Total negation. No. No. Was he sincere? That's my question. What is the meaning of it? Was it an act? Theatrical act. What could I do? How do you argue with Justice Frankfurt? Czechanowski <laughs> tells me he's <laughs> a powerful man. As a matter of fact. But he was even a key figure in the Jewish yes. community. As a matter of fact, when the he the of asked me, too, Mr. Karski, do you know who I am? So then I said, yes, sir. You are. Associate Justice of the Supreme Court. And then I cracked a little. Uh, uh, my ambassador also told me that you are a very important man. I remember this. Justice Frankfurter looks at Czechanowski. Then, then well, he introduces himself. And what is the meaning of this now, according to you? I don't believe you. What didn't he believe? Yes, I think he believed me, of course. I, uh, I have no doubt he did his best, whatever he could have done. He, he took it for granted I was going back to Poland. Probably he wanted to show me Yes, that the world is unprepared. This is an unprecedented problem. This is a horrible problem. Generally speaking, when the Jews are in Warsaw said that uh, their problem, this means their destruction, couldn't be handled in a purely a military manner, that one had to find something else. Did these people, these specific people, these Jews, did they understand this or not? They did. I'm oh, sure they did. Uh, was I'm the sure they did. The same rescue through victory. No, 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 no. They did understand this problem. They sympathized with the Polish Jews. Something has to be done in this respect. They will do their best. But this would end. Did this you have? Did you have the feeling that? Uh, they understood the fantastic uh, emergency, that every day was too late. Because this is what you were uh, in charge to convey. I think they did not. You think they did not? They did not. It was a serious problem, a tragic problem. We are doing our best. So much can be done. The rest cannot be done. We are doing whatever we can do in this problem. Rather, from the Jewish leaders, rather I was getting this kind of reaction. And then Jewish leaders, oh, most of them interested. Uh, well, how to do it? This every day help. Now, a question could be asked. And as a matter of fact, at various stages of this film, this question emerged. Uh, is there any comparison between what happened to the European Jews during the Second World War? Could it be compared to any happening in the past history? whatever I know about history, totally unique. It was a problem in itself, unprecedented historically. Humanity, one could say, healthy humanity, rational humanity, which did not see it with their own eyes, were not actually there 
they had no precedent to compare it. As you know, I mentioned this. 35 years past, I have been conditioned by the American environment. Now, naturally, in my mind, I know it was true. I cannot handle it. What I saw in this respect, Jewish extermination, is incomprehensible for me. I cannot handle it. I can handle perfectly well Polish problem. I discuss it in my classes. Czech, Serb, Russian. I understand, I comprehend. I could speak about it calmly, rationally. History is cruel. To many nations, to many individuals. I ran away. I tried to eliminate what I saw as far as the Jews were concerned. Now, not only history did not see such an event before, nothing happened since then which could be compared. Of course, again, history is cruel. Nations fight, individuals hate, political considerations enter the picture. Conquest, torture, prison, collective responsibility, wars, victorious wars, defeats in the wars. We'll see, we see it now. <laughs> we look around the world, we have it. I don't know how to, to put this question uh, because it's difficult to formulate. Um, what is the meaning of Belzech or of Treblinka uh, seen from Washington or from New York? I, I talk at the time or from London. Did, uh, for, for yourself, for instance, uh, when you were reporting, reporting, reporting every day, uh, like a machine, as you said. Uh, did you uh, did you remember Warsaw when you were here in Washington? Yes. yes of course, not in the way I remember it now. As I mentioned, now I am much weaker emotionally, so I break down. I avoided at the time. Yes, I was a machine. I was a report. But uh, how do you judge the people who, uh, through what you said, didn't grasp the real meaning of what it was? Uh, is it possible to grasp the destruction of the Jews when one lives in Washington, a complete other world? At that time, yes. probably not. Probably not. It might have been possible if every one of those individuals actually was there. Because now, all of us, we are intelligent people. It was unprecedented. This kind of things really never happened for a normal human being, educated, having political responsibility, a leader. All of us, we know, our brain, our concepts, can operate only within certain limits, mainly what the environment puts, books, knowledge information puts into our brain. At a certain point, probably our brains are not able to grasp something.
I reported what I saw. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm uh, very rarely speechless. I've seen this film several times, uh, and uh, it always leaves me speechless. It's, uh, I think, really quite an extraordinary document. Uh, Mr. Lensman has agreed to take uh, some questions. I would ask that uh, anybody who would like to address a question to Mr. Lensman first identify themselves. And I ask you, please, kindly, and I know with a Jewish audience, it's not uh, always very easy, but I would ask people to address questions and uh, please not to deliver manifestos. So, uh, sir, you're in the front. And, and can you please speak as loudly as you can because we don't have the benefit of a microphone there. Tell me what he said, because I did, I did not hear it. Monsieur, si vous avez, if you saw Shoah, you know that he had proofs, no? He went to the Warsaw Ghetto and. Uh, ah bah, he, he, Monsieur, c'est vraiment très triste. It's very sad to be obliged to answer you and to answer this kind of uh, of questions. You know, he, he was in the Warsaw Ghetto with uh, three cameras and uh, and uh, Nikon and uh, new telephone and this. Uh, no, uh, no, I don't want to to answer you. It is ridiculous. Excusez-moi. Did you see Shoah? Well, on dirait pas. Oui. Oui. I saw Shoah in the when I was in Paris when it first came out, but, um, and I, because of you, I interviewed some of the people afterward who, who were connected to the story. I have like a film type question, though. It, you, you, you were remarkable in extracting testimonies. What, what is sort of your strategy, though, aside from wanting people to know about the Holocaust? 
de sortir les informations de la personne. Quelle est votre stratégie Oh, so it's not a problem. My, the strategy is not my. It is not my problem. There is one thing which uh, strikes me very much when I see this. Uh, there is a long time that I did not see this film. It is another film than Shoah. It is something completely different. It was impossible when I see this. I think I was really right. It was impossible to include this in Shoah. It is another tone, another... Uh, Karski is not the, the same. He is acting in many respects. It's, uh, what he says is very important, but he is... Uh, in French, the expression française is... He is a peu cabotin. Uh, is clear, and I respect him very, very much, and I admire him. But it is a complete different tone than the tone of uh, Shoah, which is absolutely and purely tragic. Uh, and the meeting with Roosevelt is not uh, tragic at all. Felix, Felix Frankfurter, Frankfurter said, I, I do, do not believe you. Alors, quand, quand Karski euh, parlait euh, à propos de Frankfurter et que Frankfurter a dit, je ne vous crois pas, what, what was, was going, going through, through your head, head listening, listening to that? Euh, Qu'est-ce qui se passait dans votre tête quand vous avez entendu ça? Qu'est-ce qui se passait dans ma tête? Mais je, I was, uh, I understood perfectly and Karski, and Frankfurter, and probably if I would have been uh, living in a, a beautiful office of Washington, D.C., maybe I would have reacted exactly as Frankfurter did. You, you, one cannot imagine what happened. Did if you, you take Shoah, in Shoah, a man like uh, Philip Muller, who was in the Auschwitz, uh, oh stop la was in Auschwitz under commando said a beautiful uh, sentence who wants to live is doomed to hope okay thank you uh, yes. uh, Miriam Greiber uh, uh, do, do you think, think that he answered you in a perspective of 35 years or were those feel his feelings at the time? My question is, do you think that Karski answered you in a, in a way that he reflected 32 years later, or were his feelings at the time the same? Quand il m'a quoi Quand il vous a répondu dans le film, est-ce que c'est... Elle demande si vous pensez que ses pensées étaient les mêmes 35 ans plus tard que celles qui étaient quand c'est arrivé. Je pense quoi Que les pensées de Karski Les pensées de Karski, oui. Il note... The For sure, they were not exactly the same. Time passed, he became, uh, he became a famous man, but I think that he's uh, deeply honest. He does not lie at all. Nobody lies in, the, in, uh, in what you have seen. Yeah, madam. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, did, did you, you have, have a feeling exactly on that point with Frankfurter, Frankfurter that Frankfurter was answering this because he still believes in humanity? Uh, 
est-ce qu'il avait encore euh, le, la pensée, qu'il pensait à l'humanité Madame, je ne sais pas si il pensait à l'humanité, mais beaucoup de gens ne pensent pas. Pour vous, il semble que Everything seems to be very clear today. Uh, no, this is a, you have a kind of uh, retroactive uh, thought about the, the past. The past was a, a present. And uh, yes, sir, you're in the center. I'm sorry, can we ask you just to pass that uh, microphone up? Can you speak, speak without the microphone? Be, be nice, please. What did he say? À quel point est-ce que vous avez à quel point avez-vous interviewé Karski? Uh, what was the second part of the question? Have you already done the interview with Europe? Est-ce que vous aviez déjà fait vos interviews en Europe? Est-ce que vous aviez interviewé quelqu'un en Europe avant de avant de faire ce film avec Jan Karski? Uh, surely yes. Yes. I said surely yes. Alors donc c'était la fin de vos interviews quand vous avez fait ce film avec Jan Karski. No, Kersky. it was not the end. It took me a very long time. So I, don't, I don't understand. Middle, obviously, if I've understood correctly, uh, the interviews with. Professor Karski were at some point in the middle uh, of, the, of the process. Neither if the you if you want to, if I've understood correctly, what you are you are a, a member of the of the police of the <laughs> Shin Bet. You are what? <laughs> Please uh, be be quiet. No. C'est qui ce bonhomme Est-ce que, est que nous avons... Quoi Est-ce que nous avons vu... Il demande, est-ce que nous avons vu euh, l'interview du commencement à la fin ou il, il, ça a été coupé Ça n'a pas été coupé. It wasn't cut. It was the whole thing. It was not cut, sir. C'est tout, la, tout le, le film Quoi C'est tout le film ah, oui, bien sûr. C'était une grande partie de la deuxième journée du tournage. It was a large part of the second day of filming. Uh, sir. My name is Professor Sellinger. I'm from the United States. I'm a sociologist. I asked this with a poly... Sir, I apologize. Can you speak a little bit more slowly? Yes. Mr. My name... I'm a sociologist, a sociologist Professor Selinger from the United I States. Be sociologue. Sociologue. Uh, uh, I, I, I apologize, apologize Mr. Lansman, Lansman, for asking this question, question. and I hope you'll, I hope you will take it in the right way. Je m'excuse. I was. I cette question, et j'espère que vous allez le prendre de la bonne façon. I was disappointed on two things. Number one, you never responded or questioned the ease which he accepted the statement either of Frankfurt or of the United States. I think. Just a minute. You never questioned. He has been disappointed because you never questioned the answers that he has given à propos de. Frankfurter. He posed the question. Can I go? On? Yes. May I go? On? With with great respect. One moment, sir. C'est c'est il dit que vous n'avez pas posé de questions quand il a quand il a décrit ce qui s'est passé avec Monsieur Frankfurter. Ah bah, 
You are completely wrong because well, can, uh, I, can I just, I just with great respect, respect for your work, work and, and I, I use it in my class, class all the time, I, I, don't, I, I don't do don't think. Je respecte votre. Il dit qu'il respecte votre travail et qu'il l'utilise dans ses cours tout le temps. Alors, alors, euh, calme. And what is the question now, sir? No, please I, stop I to think ultimately like the, the film like really I, works I, as I, an I, apologetic I, document. It seems to me it ultimately minimizes the Shoah. It ultimately seeks in a very sophisticated way to Sir, by no means you are not definitely, you are not an artist. Clear. <clears throat> My name is Betzal El Porton. I'm a professor here at the Hebrew University. And I want, don't you think that it is strange that after 30 years, Karski could remember word for word conversations as well as expressions, facial expressions, Do, do you mean that Karski was a liar? You should uh, be careful with your words, no? No, that's why I asked the question, because I think it's remarkable. Karski had been choosing. It's remarkable. What? He said it's remarkable. Karski had been chosen by the Polish uh, underground because of his uh, fantastic uh, memory. He was able to remember every word he had to transmit, he had to convey without any paper. You seem to forget that he had been caught by the Gestapo, no? Uh, during one of his missions, terribly uh, tortured, that he didn't uh, he didn't yield to the torture, and he was saved by a brilliant uh, operation of the Armia Krajowa. Uh, your uh, skepticism should be, I am ashamed of this, for you. No, you answered my question, thank you. Uh, now, stop. L ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid um, that we've reached uh, the end of the time that we have allotted for this evening. I, I'm sorry that there isn't a more uplifting way on which we could conclude this evening. It's a, it's a, poignant, it's a poignant document. It's, uh, I think, a topic that haunts many of us. Uh, I'm sure it haunts Mr. Mr. Landsman. As, as, it, as it haunts me and I'm sure many other people, but I think this is an opportunity to again express our profound gratitude to an extraordinary artist. Mr. Lansman, I want to say one other thing to you, and that is I, I hope you know uh, that you are always in Israel welcome. I hope that you know that in Israel you are always in your second home, and that you're always uh, our very, very welcome guest, and that it's always our uh, extraordinary honor to have you with us in our midst. So thank you very much for coming. Merci beaucoup.